CMI speakers get to conduct a variety of ministry, including churches, public meetings, prisons, university classrooms, radio broadcasts, etc. A large part of the CMI ministry that is underwritten by ordinary folk like you is to Christian and public schools, when invited. While I'm pleased that more and more children we minister to get to hear that the Bible is real history, they are still the minority, even in churches and Christian schools. When I ask, when were dinosaurs made? Most will reply, millions of years ago. One reason is that churches, schools, and Sunday schools often teach the Bible, and in particular the Old Testament, as if it were just a book of stories, nice accounts with a moral message, but not connected to the real world of science and history. Then, when the children are taught the facts of biology, geology, astronomy, and other classes on TV and the like, they see their faith as remote from reality. This was evident in one good Christian school I once visited, despite every teacher being a solid Bible believer. The primary elementary school youngsters were wide-eyed and amazed at the things being said, and enthusiastically asked lots of questions. Though they clearly had learned much about the Bible being real history, they were open and receptive. Many told me how much they enjoyed the talk. By contrast, when the high school students, by now coming to terms with the reality of life in a fallen world, they showed little interest in the idea of someone talking to them about the Bible. I could almost hear the collective groans as the subject matter I was going to talk about was introduced. This was until I was able to catch their attention when talking about natural selection, variation within a created kind, the origin of races, where all people came from, and of course, dinosaurs. Why do children lose their trust in the Bible? By Gary Bates. Why the about face and interest? Because the Bible suddenly became connected to the real world. It wasn't just a book of stories about morals to beat them over the head with. It dawned on them that the flood of Noah was real history, accounting for much of the geology we see in the world today. The Tower of Babel could account for the origin of different people groups, and the Bible explains dinosaurs and so on. The school had not realized that the Bible needs to be brought into all areas of our thinking, not just left for the Christian studies classes. Unless this happens, our children will be ill-equipped to defend their faith against evolutionary bombardment they will receive in higher education. You may recall the testimony of scientist Cheng Sha Feng. If you haven't, check out the article The Battle of Cheng Sha. His family had a strong Christian heritage, producing several generations of pastors. At his home, he says, Bible stories and verses were read all the time, and the entirety of God's word was believed. We never concerned ourselves with the theory of evolution. So Cheng Sha was not prepared for the onslaught he received in university. He had no answers, and neither did the other Christians around him. No longer could he believe the Bible. The facts had proven it wrong. Until he was introduced to CMI material, which was able to undo all the brainwashing, as he puts it, that undermined his faith. So pastors, parents, teachers, and leaders, we cannot stress enough the importance of teaching our children and grandchildren using the correct worldview. That is, the Bible is the absolute authority in all areas, so that they are able to discern the truth in years to come. Michael M. wrote and said, Keep at it! I get the impression that the real fruit of your labors won't show for a couple of decades yet, when the kids with minds now impressed with creation teaching grow up and take their positions in our society. As we've often said, evangelism starts in the home. Important to consider in our current situation. We have great helps for all parents, regardless of how and where your children are educated, in the Parents Corner of Creation.com. Also, see the children's section of our store for great resources to help train your children at home and in the online groups that are going on today. While you're thinking about online educational resources, 
I need to tell you about one of our best. Dr. Jonathan Sarfati's best-selling book, The Genesis Account, is some 800 pages long. Now, this book is arguably the most comprehensive book on biblical creation ever written, and it comes from the author of some of the most well-known books on the subject, including Refuting Evolution, which remains the largest selling creation book of all time. So our team at CMI, the scientists and the specialists and speakers, and the video production team worked very hard for almost two years to bring to you the information of the Genesis account and a Bible study course. And we're excited to tell you that it's available right now the Genesis Academy. This 12-part video course makes it easy to continue the teaching on origins in further depth. Targeted to lay audiences, each video in the 12-part series is no more than 40 minutes in length, so it's ideal for adult and teen Sunday school, Bible studies, or even Sunday night screenings, and while you're at it, during your quarantine. All the presentations have high-quality visuals and footage to keep viewers engaged. Many believers are excited to learn more to face skeptics' challenges. Our hope is that the Genesis Academy will become an essential staple for every church. It is so important to get a correct understanding of the Bible's foundational chapters right, and this series achieves just that. Comes with a free online study guide so that you can follow along. Available in the United States, Canada, United Kingdom, and Europe, and a few other countries. Get the Genesis Academy for your group today at creation.com academy. I am Joseph Darnell. For everyone at Creation Ministries International, thanks for listening.